Hey everybody, so I realize it's been a very long time since I've actually done a facility tour update. Um, if you look on my old channel, The Crest of Gecko, uh, I think I have a facility tour on there. There's actually also one embedded in my website as well that showed a lot of what my building or my facility looked like years and years and years ago. Well, it's changed a lot. Um, you know, I've, I've scaled back the number of species that I work with now. I'm mostly focused on ball pythons. I have a few green tree pythons and a, a few geckos as well. But um, it's really changed a lot since I did that last video. And that was probably about 10 years ago, give or take. I don't even know when it was, but it was a long time ago. So things have really changed here a lot. And uh, I actually have two different facilities. As a form of insurance for myself, uh, fire, tornado, anything like that, I decided to break my collection up into two collections. Um, and that's partly to um, have security for myself. Like if I would have something happen to this building, I would be, and all of my animals were here, I'd be completely out of business. And I don't want that to ever be a situation that happens, obviously. So I have a second, much smaller building that I keep a portion of my breeders and a lot of my holdbacks at as well. And I'll show that, um, that building on a, a future video. So this one here, I have a lot of my ball python breeders going along this wall here. See all freedom breeder racks. Um, here's a blue-eyed leucistic breeding uh, pastavi right now. And this is in late March, 2021. Uh, we've got a lot of breeding going on right now. Very, very few eggs incubating actually. Um, and we're gonna show, I'm gonna show you my incubators in just a minute and you'll see exactly how empty they are right now. But I've got a lot of, tons and tons of breeding going on and I have a lot of gravid females too. I'm seeing ovulations almost every day. Um, got a lot of breedings uh, going on in here right now. So it's looking pretty good for the 2021 season. So th these are all females and I've got some males in here and then more females along here. And then over here, I've got some males and females as well. So I think I have probably somewhere around 250 breeder females here uh, and probably about 150 breeder males. I actually have a lot more males than what I really need. Some of them are ones that I used to use and I don't really use them that much anymore. And also I like to keep my clutches really versatile so every clutch is kind of different. So I use a lot of different types of males with a lot of different genetic combinations in them. So like in, if I have like a, a row of, I don't know, like clown female or column of clown females, I'm not going to breed you know, two males to all those females. I'm going to breed four or five different males to, to those females. Like, you know, these two females get one male, these three get another one. And that um, if the males and females have different combinations of genes in them, I'm going to produce a wider variety of, of babies. So, and I'm sure you can hear in the background a little bit of uh, noise going on here. This is the bird that you've seen in, or heard anyway, in plenty of my videos. This is Spike. He's an umbrella cockatoo. Um, I actually got him while I worked at a pet store when I was, uh, um, after I graduated college, I spent a couple of uh, several years working at a pet store in college and after college while I was getting my business ready to go full time. And we got him in when he was a chick. Uh, he was probably only a week old. We got him from a local breeder and I used to take him home and hand raise him. Uh, and I just kind of got attached to him and I decided, sure, why not have a a pet that's gonna be like a two-year-old forever and is gonna outlive me. Uh, he's about 20, I think he's 22 years old right now and he'll probably be around for another 40 years, give or take. Um, I can't keep him in the house at home because he's way, way too messy, but um, the conditions in the shop here are actually just perfect for him. You know, we keep it very humid. You'll see that the floors are wet. We went down the floors in here at least once a day. Uh, we have radiant heat in the floor. That radiant heat causes evaporation, keeps it nice and humid in here. And then we have a background temperature in here set to about 75 to 77 degrees at night, depending on the time of year. And during the day, uh, depending on time of the year, it's anywhere between 80 and 83 degrees. So it's always kind of tropical in here. I wear shorts and t-shirt here year round. Um, and Spike happens to like that kind of environment too. So um, yeah, so if you ever hear his squawking in the background, that's him. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. So over on this side of the building, um, I do my photography stuff right here. Pretty simple setup, just a couple of lights, white backdrop, and uh, just 
put them on there, take the picture, and once I got all the pictures done, then just sit down in front of my computer and post them on the website. So these racks all through here, most of the time when I'm shooting a video here, you'll see me, I'm, I've got normally this, these racks in the background, um, but these are where all of my hatchlings and my, my for sale snakes go. Uh, you can see I've got quite a few of them. I think I've got 14 or 15 racks in here. I think I can hold about 1,240 individual snipes. So as you can see, a lot of them are getting pretty empty. And actually, I think two of these full, fuller racks are actually sold. And then a couple of other ones are all holdbacks too. So we are really, really getting low on babies and, and sub-adults to sell right now. Um, luckily, the breeding season is well underway and will be restocked by probably by midsummer. But uh, it's definitely getting a little low. And I would say this is probably the fewest number of babies that I've had for sale from the previous year, probably in 10 years. Like we probably have about 200 2020s for sale yet. And normally at this time of year, we probably have closer to 500 on a normal year. So it's been insane. Um, so we use cocoa chip bedding as a substrate. It retains moisture really well. It's perfect for keeping humidity high in the cages. So this in a combination with keeping the building um, as humid as it is, that will uh, that helps with shedding and just the overall health of the snakes. You know, health of the snakes is the number one priority here. You know, everything we do revolves around making this environment perfect for them. And that's that's the name of the game here. You know, if you don't have healthy, good, good quality snakes, you don't have a business. So we are working really, really hard to make sure that that happens. Okay. Um... Let's see, got a couple of work cards. That's nothing unusual, I wouldn't think. Um, in this room here, we have our incubators. So these incubators right now are shut down. Um, we've got you know all the tubs in there waiting for eggs. And then this incubator is the one we keep running year round. Um, only have one clutch. We got a, actually a couple of gecko eggs in there, but only one clutch of all python eggs right now. Those are going to be hatching any day. So I'm actually going to have probably at least a week or two of no eggs incubating whatsoever. And that's really weird for me. Normally my season is much more spread out and I've always got eggs hatching and babies hatching year round. So it's kind of, kind of crazy. And it, I actually am looking forward to getting that incubator filled up again. If you had asked me a month or two months ago, if I, um, if I was looking forward to getting more eggs, I mean, I couldn't even wrap my head around that because I had so many to sell, uh, so many babies from the previous year to sell out there. But now, I, yeah, I'm ready for more eggs. I want to start hatching some of the 2021s really badly. Okay, let's head back into here. So we have a rodent facility off the back of this. Uh, we're not self-sufficient, but we do produce a large number of rats, mice, and African soft furs. And uh, just to supplement what I purchased um, from rodent breeders to f feed everything. We, we don't really have the space or the ability to, to become self-sufficient. We go through a lot of rodents, probably close to 2,000 every week. So um, we're just not able to, to produce that many of them. But we do produce quite a few, and, and we use that to feed some of our for sale babies and also some of our holdbacks as well. So here's the second... the third section of the for sale stuff and holdbacks. As you guys know, I'm the ball python hoarder. I hold back probably way too much stuff, but this whole rack here are all holdbacks from 2020. There's a few 2019s in here as well, but um, you know, it's always about stepping up and improving the collection, uh, what you want to produce. You know, like we've got, you know, I want to replace all of my like pastavis and pastel butters and things like that with a blue-eyed leucistic. Um, you know, it's always upgrading what I have uh, for breeders. Okay. So then over here, this is our, these are some animal plastics racks. These are, are for overflow. During the hatching season, sometimes, you know, when, when you have a pretty defined season of when babies hatch, you get, you sometimes get a lot more hatching out at one time than what you can comfortably house. So I brought these out and we just have these set up for whenever um, we have too many babies hatching. Normally we sell them fast enough. We don't really ever fill up typically, but 
you know, in late summer, early fall, when we've been hatching babies for a while and we still have a lot of babies hatching every day, we sometimes run out of space. So that's why we, you know, we'll get these racks all cleaned up and ready to go for the summer. And then over here, these are some of my geckos. Uh, as many of you probably know, uh, I used to be a big time gecko breeder. I produced about 4,000 leopard geckos and crested geckos combined along with some lychees, gargoyle geckos, um, African fat tails. I mean, I had almost everything for geckos. And um, I very much scaled that back because the ball pythons just got too out of control and I just couldn't deal with managing two huge collections. So now I mostly just keep like a pet level or, or hobbyist level uh, of geckos. Um, so we're hoping to get more exoteric cages and finish this countertop off. I wanna get my crested geckos out here and my lychees out here. Um, but yeah, we don't have a whole lot. Uh, I've got some leopard gecko groups down there. I do have more leopard gecko breeders than what is in these, but um, but these are the ones that I've decided, and obviously they're all sleeping in their caves right now, but those are the ones that I uh, decided to put out in displays. And then I have um, day geckos. Let's see if they can see them very well. There's a, a giant day gecko right there. And uh, day geckos are one of my favorite lizards ever. They're actually the first species that I ever successfully bred in captivity. Uh, that was when I was in college. I think it was 1992. I hatched out my first baby day geckos. Uh, so I've always loved them. I have a really soft spot in my heart for them and I'll probably always have at least a pair or two. Um, this cage here, which you won't be able to see anything in there, there's a male and two female um, toka geckos. And then I've got one very, very old standings day gecko in here and then another pair of giant day geckos in there. You can see, I think that's the female on the back wall there. You know, if I had it my way, I would have a couple pairs of everything, um, but it's really difficult when you have a lot of animals. And then if you have multiple species with very different care regimens, it's hard to keep up with all of it. And that's mostly why I'm focused mo pretty much only on ball pythons for breeding. I just, um, you know, it's so much easier to take care of a lot of snakes that all require relatively the same care rather than have so many different species and trying to deal with all the different care of each species specifically. I felt like when I had a lot of different species, there were always some that I did very, very well on with breeding. And there were others that I just never really quite figured out all the minor details that makes the difference between being an okay breeder and being an excellent breeder. So I decided to stop fighting that and just work with the species that interested me the most, which are ball pythons. So that's why I'm pretty much all ball pythons now. So if you can find that old video, uh, you'll see bearded dragons, you'll probably see maybe chameleons, a lot of different species of snakes on there. And uh, yeah, obviously from what you just saw, it's really changed a lot. So anyway, I hope you guys like this. Um, I'll do a tour of my other facility at some point in the hopefully the fairly near future. Um, so in the meantime, make sure to visit my website, royalconstrictordesigns.com to see what I have available and I'll be posting new animals or new snakes as they hatch. We'll see you soon.